Today we're going to be looking over the startup for the Mirage F1CE. This will be what I call an expedited startup, skipping any tests and checks. If you'd like to do a full start, tests included, you'll be able to learn these with the modules included training missions. Let's begin. In the cockpit, we'll close the canopy by clicking on one of the grab rails found on the frame, or by pressing left control and C. If you wish, we can also leave the canopy ajar by lowering the latch. Before takeoff, we need to close and lock the canopy in place by moving the red lever on the right side to the forward position. OK, on the right side, switch on the battery. Check that the alternators are both on and the inverter is in the centre auto position. Enable the warning horn, after which it will sound. From the top of the instrument panel, press and clear the caution to silence the horn. Next up, the fuel. On the left side, open the main fuel cock and cover it. Set the left hand and right hand fuel pumps to the left on position. This red switch controls the ignition or ventilation to allow clearing of a failed start. Each startup you want to alternate between the left or centre position to evenly wear the two igniters, but for DCS's purposes you can skip it and leave it in the centre position. We're now ready to start the engine. Things happen fast here, so let's go over it. First, the starter pump must be switched on just before starting, which can be done by opening the starter button cover. The BP caution will clear on the warning panel shortly after powering on the starter pump. Second, when we open the starter cover, which is held closed by a spring, it's done by holding the left mouse on the cover and then using the right mouse to press and hold the starter button for between 1 and 2 seconds. Third, as the engine starts, we'll need to push the throttle up to idle as we pass 300 RPM. Our throttle handle is held in the cutoff position by a latch. Pressing this will move the throttle forwards into the idle position. You can return to cutoff by reducing the throttle to idle and then releasing the latch. This will shut down the engine if it's already running. OK, let's warm her up. Switch on the starter pump by opening the cover. Give it a second to pressurize. Hold the starter switch for between 1 and 2 seconds to begin the startup. Throttle to idle as we pass 300 RPM. And we should see the engine stabilize at roughly 2,900 revolutions per minute. It should be noted that attempting to use the starter switch with the engine already in motion will destroy the starter system. Therefore, ensure that the engine RPM reads zero and never attempt it whilst the aircraft is airborne. With the engine now running, the starter pump will act as a backup and can be left on. With main power now available, we'll rearm the inverter, found above the failure warning panel. On the right side console, environmental panel, we'll now switch on the master valve control. This enables both the air conditioning and avionics cooling. Next, the gyroscopic system, by rotating the knob to GM for gyromagnetic and then turn on the backup system, found beside it. This will take about 2 minutes to align the gyroscopes for attitude, bank, heading and course calculations. Once aligned, the CAP caution lights will go out. The F1CE does not have an inertial navigation system, so you will be relying on map charts and radio navigational aids. So now is a great time to set up your TACAN or VOI if you desire, which we'll cover in a later video. Carrying on, we'll enable our electrical systems, the standby horizon, the electro pump, probe heater, radar warning receiver, optionally the police light, and put the radar in standby. Lastly, we will enable our heads up display by placing it in the middle normal position. Back on the left side, we'll now reset the control servos, clearing a number of cautions on our panel. We're almost there. On the lower instrument panel, we will uncage the standby horizon with the mouse wheel. And if you've set up your navigational radios, we're going to set our radio navigation indicator source as desired. Lastly, we can hide the stick by clicking on the handle, 
Be careful not to click on the ejection control as you do this. Behind the stick we will put the shock current into auto mode by pushing it. This controls the airflow into the engines at high speed. Push the nose while steering in to enable the high gain steering. The IFF panel is not simulated and can be ignored. And if we've flown a mission and come back and landed and rearmed, you'll want to return your trim to neutral before taking off again. The trim is displayed at the bottom of the rudder, roll and pitch. Centre the lines with the dots with the trim controls and we know we're back in neutral trim. Once done we can return the stick by clicking in the space it used to occupy. You may also wish to adjust the seat height found on the right of our ejection seat, and lock the canopy if you have not already done so. Finally, check that all the failure warning panel lights are out. If any are still illuminated, you've missed a step. Reference this translation to help you figure out what's wrong. Don't forget to set your lights up as desired with formation and anti-collision lights found on the right of the caution panel, and the landing taxi light which is found on the left wall by the landing gear and lower the flaps fully in preparation for takeoff. We're now ready to taxi. I hope you enjoyed, and take care.